coming up on Inside California Education Community Colleges. Explore what California's community colleges are doing to help the regions they serve and keep their students learning during the ongoing pandemic. We saw how much the nurses needed help because, um, you know, if you had one symptom, they were sending nurses home, which meant that there was a shortage. Nursing students in Stockton were just weeks away from graduating when the pandemic hit. Discover how they managed to finish their education while also lending a hand at local hospitals. Literally everybody and their grandma, or everybody and my grandma, was calling me saying, hey, did you see people using 3D printers to make face shields and, and make PPE? Uh, and, and because I'm the person who sets up these facilities, I have access to lots of machines. We'll see how two Bay Area community colleges use their maker spaces to produce thousands of pieces of personal protective equipment for hospitals and first responders. What's great about this testing site is it's available for anyone who wants a test. And, you know, the experts say that's very important for us going back to business because you need to have widespread testing available. Explore a coronavirus testing center that opened up on the Lake Tahoe campus as a resource for the entire community. I was a part-time student and a part-time worker, so I was managing both at the same time. Hear from Sacramento students who lost their jobs and turned to their community colleges for emergency cash and free laptops as classes went online. Discover how an acclaimed Los Angeles culinary arts program kept its students learning and cooking through online classes and drive through food distribution. We're working hard to prepare our campuses for a physical distancing education environment coming the fall because even the classes that are offered in person, they're going to have to be conducted under a very strict physical distancing protocol. Plus, we'll hear from top community college leaders about what's ahead and why they're expecting a surge in enrollment. It's all next on Inside California Education Community Colleges. Inside California Education Community Colleges is made possible by College Futures Foundation believes nothing is more transformative for individuals and our society than an educational opportunity. We partner with organizations and leaders across California to help students earn college degrees, regardless of zip code, skin color, or income. More information at collegefutures.org. Support for this program provided by the Foundation for California Community Colleges and the Los Angeles Community College District. California's community colleges make up the largest system of higher education in the nation educating more than 2 million students on 115 campuses. So when the coronavirus pandemic hit in March 2020, college leaders say their first priority was the safety of all those people. It was a very chaotic time. There was a lot of information going around, a lot of confusion going around. We literally took millions of students higher education, uh, in higher education that are enrolled at our colleges and universities and safely put them at home or remote environments, uh, thereby you know, doing our part uh, to mitigate uh, the spread. After closing campuses for safety, the colleges quickly pivoted to their next priority, how to educate students online. Most of the colleges say they were able to move about 90% or more of their classes online. You are the new day. Even some classes you might not expect like the Glendale Community College Concert Singers. But the transition online was not as straightforward for some vocational courses, including first responders like nurses. In California, seven out of 10 nurses receive their training at a community college. It's um, amazing as a community college educator to turn on the TV every day and see just how many community college students are right there on the front line, literally saving our lives during this pandemic. So it was critically important for us to do everything we could do to keep that workforce going. That required creative thinking. Hospitals throughout California have long hosted student nurses for what's known as a clinical. Students working side by side with registered nurses and patients. Nursing students need a certain number of clinical hours to graduate. 
but the clinical process got turned upside down with COVID-19. So as soon as the pandemic hit, all hospitals dismissed all students, and that was experienced throughout the state of California. Um, no students were allowed to be in clinical sites. San Joaquin Delta College in Stockton had 63 students who were just eight weeks away from graduating from its nursing program. Without access to hospitals, these students couldn't graduate into the workforce where they were desperately needed. It was a problem playing out across the U.S. Delta College leaned on its relationships with local hospitals dating back more than 50 years, and it paid off. Two local hospitals, St. Joseph's Medical Center and San Joaquin General Hospital, agreed to let their students back inside to complete their clinical hours. Brianna Cobarubias was grateful to be among those students. I think for us, it was just such a, a relief to be able to get into clinical. And, and they did tell us, you know, you, you don't have to go back to clinical if you feel that you're, you just feel, you know, scared or you just don't want to be in that type of environment. Um, and none of us felt that we didn't want to finish this through because, again, not a lot of nursing students get to say that they got to experience and be in the hospital during a pandemic. So for us, it's like, wow, we're, we're lucky. Brianna's hospital didn't allow students to work with coronavirus patients in order to save PPE for its regular staff. But Brianna says she was allowed to do everything else she needed to graduate on time and fulfill her dream of becoming a nurse. Okay, so I wanted to become a nurse because when I was in high school, my um, brother and my dad were hit by a drunk driver and um, the way that the nurses cared for my family and my obviously my brother and my dad, but my family, my entire family, was um, very, uh, so they were very supportive and they were very uh, caring, compassionate towards them and, uh, and the rest of us. Yes, I've got a mask on and you know why. We are so proud of you. Uh, and so we wanted to pop in and say hello. Delta College moved its nursing lectures online and provided students with virtual support from afar. And while students couldn't have their traditional pinning ceremony for these soon-to-be nurses, the college held a drive-through graduation that had almost as much pomp and circumstance as the traditional ceremony. We serve our community by providing nurses. You know, the uh, vast majority of the people that work within our region, you know, are graduates of our program. Um, as I said, since we've been here for 50 plus years, there's, there's ties and that um, you know, plays a really important piece in our community health. While Delta College was scrambling to educate nurses, the Peralta Community College District in the Bay Area was working to protect them. In the days and months after the pandemic, two of Peralta's colleges produced tens of thousands of pieces of personal protective equipment. That PPE was then donated to local Bay Area hospitals. During that time, one of my colleagues uh, was watching the news and saw that there was a really um, scary lack of personal protective equipment for doctors and nurses here in the Bay Area, not just, you know, in New York or around the world. And he had this great idea. He called me and he said, hey, why don't we use the equipment in the in the fab lab to prototype and produce some, um, some PPE? The fab lab is a makerspace with tools, supplies, and 3D printers. Before the pandemic, about 500 community college students would access Fab Lab spaces each semester at the College of Alameda and Laney College. It's amazing to that we have this access um, to these uh, machines that can really transform people's ability to like make things and understand the world and like change their careers. It was also a natural fit for making PPE. Laney College's Fab Lab produced 500 face shields that they donated to local hospitals. But the demand was far greater, so they launched a GoFundMe campaign to make even more. We're expecting a Laney visor to cost $2.50 each. So, with a generous donation of $25, you'll get 10 medical face shields into the hands of doctors, nurses, and medical professionals here in the Bay Area. They raised $25,000 and partnered with a Santa Rosa company called Wright Engineered Plastics to make 10,000 more face shields. So this is the part that was developed. Uh, this is just a, a, a simple elastic band. You could use a rubber band, um, anything that worked to hold this together. 
And then this is a plastic sheet of uh, clear plastic. While Laney College focused on face shields, the College of Alameda was launching a similar effort to mass produce PPE at the Fab Lab. This project run by Danny Beasley. Two main things that I saw were the biggest problems, which is who's paying for the material and, uh, and where are you sourcing it from? And then um, quickly ended up setting up a relationship with Coca-Cola, uh, which directed about 50,000 pounds of plastic, uh, sheet plastic that's been used for face shields, though we're using it for a few other things now. Um, and then uh, we also collectively sourced about 15,000 yards of donated fabric. Um, and so between those two things, a lot of the, the folks within my network no longer had to worry about who's paying for it and where does it come from. So far, those efforts have led to 17,000 cloth face masks and 14,000 face shields that have gone to hospitals, nursing homes, and other institutions throughout the Bay Area. What makes the Fab Lab students helpful in this process is we have trained them to not only have the technical skills to manufacture things, but also to be creative, problem solve, to deal with a lot of information, to deal with a lot of ambiguity, and just figure things out. Fashion and design community college students also pitched in, sewing masks as part of the effort. Danny says he wants to see even more training and collaboration with students in the months ahead. Given the fact that we also have a large number of uh, new people unemployed, uh, and many of those jobs have disappeared entirely out of our economy and aren't coming back, uh, you know, the community colleges need to go into overdrive on, on you know, training relevant industry, uh, industry relevant skills and get people back out in the workforce. The Bay Area colleges weren't the only ones to use their physical buildings and resources to meet the moment. Lake Tahoe Community College also opened its doors, becoming a COVID-19 testing center for the entire community. The college always wanted to be part of the solution, and we know in Tahoe we're geographically isolated, and if there wasn't a site at our location, the nearest site is actually about an hour's drive away. So having this testing site was another way to provide a resource to our community. Anyone can get tested here, regardless of symptoms, insurance, or citizenship. Within its first month of opening, about 1,400 people were tested inside the college's physical education building. Lake Tahoe Community College is also known in the region for its outdoor programs, including firefighting and wilderness education. To keep those programs going, the college plans to offer hybrid courses that are held both online and in small groups. And that's specifically in things like public safety areas, such as our EMT and fire sciences. I mean, you can't replicate a burn tower online. And I've, I've said all along is, you know, there's nothing that any of us can do to make our environments completely safe, but it's always been about reducing and mitigating the risk as much as possible for our students and our employees. Colleges say they're not only figuring out how to teach many of these classes online, but making sure students can access them. Many of our students relied on Starbucks or Barnes & Noble or McDonald's for their Wi-Fi access. And when all that shut down, we found ourselves challenged. So uh, many of our colleges, uh, from our largest to smallest, uh, handed out thousands and thousands of, of Chromebooks, uh, laptop computers, portable Wi-Fis, and continue to look for resources to, to do more. We have looked anywhere we can to find people who can get hardware to our students. So the, the Human IT project is a great one. Human IT is a nonprofit in Los Angeles that refurbishes laptops. So far, they've distributed 12,000 laptops through partnerships with the colleges, including the Los Angeles Community College District and the Los Rios Community College District in Sacramento. How is this laptop going to help you? Oh, to finish. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. I was up all night with a, with a friend trying to get my work done because she has a laptop and I don't. So I'm on the phone with her trying to make sure she can, I can listen to what I need to listen to and get it done so I can turn it in before. In addition to the laptops, many districts also set up emergency cash funds for students who needed it most. For each Los Rios student who applied, that meant a $500 check. $500 doesn't sound like a lot of money to some people, but for our students, that can be absolutely the difference between making it through the semester or not making it through. And having the flexibility to buy food when they need it or pay the rent or fix the car. Sir Tureen was among the district students who applied for aid after being laid off from his job at the mall because of the pandemic. At that particular time, my dad, he had just passed away. So 
I was like, I was in a, I was in a mood where I was like, Ugh, I don't know what to do anymore. But then when I received it, I was like really happy about that. And I used it for like my bills and my brand and like just small necessities as far as like grocery shopping. I feel like they're doing a tremendous job trying to help the students out. We were poised to go um, when this happened. Of course, you know, the magnitude of it was very different. Um, our applications went up over 1,200%. In addition, we've been able to buy grocery cards um, for our hungry students. We also had a wonderful donation from one of our tremendous corporate partners, Safe Credit Union. Early on, they came through and gave us $3,300 worth of uh, grocery gift cards. Um, and so those have been a tremendous asset where we could just send one right away to a student who maybe didn't wasn't asking for the full 500 amount but we knew they had um, a, a food insecurity issue so we could get those out community college students have been impacted by COVID-19 more than any other students in higher education because the students we serve are uh, more low income they're uh, students who are frequently taking care of an aging parent or taking care of their own kids so all of the challenges that are presented by COVID-19 are amplified for community college students. It's these circumstances that leaders say make it so important for students to be able to continue their education in their chosen field. Okay, everyone. Today, we're going to do uh, brownies for our last demo of the semester. So I'll show you my ingredients. At Los Angeles Harbor College, the acclaimed culinary program is doing everything it can to keep students learning and cooking. I got some uh, sliced garlic. I got some chopped parsley. In 2019, the college took part in a culinary cup competition judged by local professional chefs, giving their students a chance to show off their skills from the front of the house to the back. Beef consomme, making potatoes, mashed potatoes, and blanches some carrots. The college's courses in cooking, baking, and restaurant management paid off, winning them the Golden Chef's Hat Trophy. TLA Harbor College. It's an amazing program. Uh, the, the chefs are completely and wholly dedicated. The students uh, are come all come from all walks of life, both men and women, uh, looking to uh, better their lives through uh, the culinary lens, if you will. I was thinking about walnuts. Um, what's the difference between the black walnuts and regular walnuts as far as... Ooh, flavor. Melanie Davis is one of those students. She's earning her GED at the same time she's been working towards a certificate in culinary arts with a dream of someday opening her own banana bread company. It's something that I've always wanted to pursue but never thought I was good enough until I started to change my life and I found my true path and... and you know, I, I went for it, and it, you're never too old to, to accomplish your dreams, and I'm living proof of that. She says she was scared in the early days of the pandemic and unsure if she'd be able to finish school. But the college reassured her. They set up a drive through food kit pickup so that students could finish their cooking classes at home. More than 70 students came to pick up their food kits, with everyone practicing safe social distancing. For example, my class, you know, I give them a whole chicken, I get them uh, butcher's twine, I get them uh, butter, flour, different ingredients, uh, items that they had to do for their sauce practicals. And really giving me an extra push towards it because it was like, wow, I got all this stuff. This is awesome. Oh my God, I'm so excited to cook. It just, it just uplifted me all over again. So I'm gonna show you the ingredients right now. All right, so these are the ingredients that we have. Chef Marie Madrid teaches a popular baking course at Harbor College and began using Zoom meetings for her demonstrations after the pandemic began. Her students say they love being able to watch in real time as she whips up one of their delicious assignments. Okay, see, look how glossy that is. So basically, we're just making liquid, liquid chocolate. Students and instructors agree online learning isn't a perfect solution but it's one that allows education to move forward at a crucial moment in time when students need skills, perhaps more than ever. And then how do you know if you've gone like too far with the, with the mixing process? Um, your brownies will come out tough. It'll be stiff. Mm. It'll be tip and tough. It'll be a little bit more chewy. We try to either go through a Zoom online uh, so that our students could have access to us and then or also videos of us recorded so that they could see our demonstration so that the students are also aware of how to execute the dish. 
The only thing that you know we really couldn't do is is taste the sauce or or taste the dish, and that's the thing that as chefs we always want to know how it tastes and whether if it needs uh, salt or less salt or, or if it's just perfect. Hey guys, Cody Avari here with the Los Angeles Harvard College Culinary Arts Program. What this is going to do is that it's going to give the crackling that nice golden puffy texture that we really want. And the same thing with cuts, you know, I could do the demonstration of cuts and then the students were taking pictures of their cuts and they were coming out in the portrait as well. You know, some of them with the uniform and some of them that, that didn't have the uniform. But uh, I, I think it was still a good thing that we were able to engage our students and be active and and, you know, encourage them because these are uh, rough times and we want to make sure that everyone continues and follows through and, and try to support them the best that we can. I think that has been the hardest thing about it is not having our teachers there. Um, I run into situations while baking and um, I'm able to get a hold of my um, teacher, but, you know, her response time might not be um, immediate. The hardest part of it was just not having your teammates and your teachers there. It's, it's been an emotional, very emotional, up and down experience, especially not being connected. Uh, as far as, you know, right next to your family and your teachers. Um, and I missed that. I really did miss that. I think with the responsibility of our community college is to be there for the community. So we want to make sure that we train people or individuals or students uh, to succeed, to hopefully get a job, to get a, a higher paying job, and to be able to uh, grow as an individual or as a citizen and, and just pretty much be there for them. The community colleges say they are expecting to see a surge of new students who perhaps had plans to go to a four-year university but are now staying at home instead. In the state of California, about 20% of the courses at Los Rios were offered online before the pandemic. So we, uh, unlike California State University and University of California, who had uh, really no online inventory before the pandemic, we had a head start in community colleges of teaching our students online. And uh, for many students who are debating whether to return to a university setting in the fall, if they're not going to have face-to-face -face -face instruction, I think the demand for community college classes will be off the map in the fall. The colleges also expect to see an influx of people who are looking to retool their skill set in the midst of an economic recession. We still are going to need people to manufacture things. We're still going to need people to maintain equipment. And, you know, that's not going away. Um, even though work is going more and more remotely these days, we still have physical objects that we need to produce. And so we're, we're a little worried about um, being able to effectively train our workforce if we can't physically be together. So it's a challenge and it's one that we're, I think we're gonna do a good job doing, but it's, it's gonna take some time to figure it out. Historically, um, when there's a recession, community college enrollment goes up. So we are expecting that, but this now has a pandemic layered over it. So it's a very different time. We absolutely expect that the 40 million Americans that are unemployed right now, that many of those will be looking to community colleges to upskill, get certificates and degrees. In the final days of the spring 2020 semester, community colleges across the state held virtual graduation ceremonies for students who crossed the finish line. Congratulations class of 2020. Hashtag you did it in spite of. I encourage you to cherish this moment as your class will go down in history as a class that succeeded in spite of historic obstacle, the 2020 pandemic. The class of Get It Dunners, congratulations on your achievement. Adolce Aguo. Esmeralda Aguiar. Looking ahead, the colleges say they are preparing for a primarily online experience in the fall with some hybrid courses on campus in careers that require hands-on training. We know we're going to have to be managed differently, that the spacing between students and PPE, if you will, and the distancing that is required 
uh, will be different. The capacity will be lower and smaller. Uh, the facilities cleaning, the air filter filtration systems will have to be monitored a lot more closely. And we're going to utilize different facilities uh, for different uh, courses that sometimes perhaps were not intended for that. But we're going to try to safely return for those areas, those hard to convert courses that we've just been able to not been able to find a software simulation solutions. We do not want any student to postpone their education. I think that would be a huge mistake in this economy. This economy keeps changing drastically every single day, and we want to ensure that all of our students have an opportunity uh, to finish their education as quickly as possible and get into that economy so that they can support themselves and their families. That's it for this special edition of Inside California Education Community Colleges. If you'd like more information about the program, log on to our website, insidecaled.org. You'll find stories from all our past seasons, and you can connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. Congratulations on your achievement. Inside California Education, Community Colleges is made possible by College Futures Foundation believes nothing is more transformative for individuals and our society than an educational opportunity. We partner with organizations and leaders across California to help students earn college degrees, regardless of zip code, skin color, or income. More information at collegefutures.org. Support for this program provided by the Foundation for California Community Colleges and the Los Angeles Community College District.